So this question says, let X and Y be numbers such that negative Y, in fact, the way I prefer to read this is from the inside out, which is to say X is greater than negative Y, but less than positive Y. Which of the following must be true? And then we have these three options and they're all in terms of X and Y. So this is a good example of plug in your own number. Right, so if I say, or the way the plug in your own number works, first of all, I know it's plug in your own number because both the question and the answer choices contain variables. That is not a very common situation on this test. Whenever I see that, plug in your own number is one of my first thoughts. Now, I do have information about what these numbers or how these numbers need to interact with each other. So, for instance, if I say x is equal to 2, I could then say y is equal to 3, and this would still work out, right? Because that, that would make it negative 2 is less than, I'm sorry, negative, let's erase that so it looks nice. It would be negative 3 is less than positive 2, which is less than positive 3. And that's a true statement. So I know that these numbers, these numbers are actually good numbers. So then which of the following must be true? Well, let's see. For choice, for option 1, the absolute value of x is less than 2. Well, let's check that out. The absolute value of, based upon the numbers I chose, absolute value of 2 is less than 3. Well, that's true. How about choice two, x is greater than zero. Yeah, two is greater than zero, so that's true. And y is greater than zero. Yeah, that's true. Three is greater than zero. That's also true. So that would lead me to think that d is the right answer because all three of those work. However, anytime I, anytime I use plug in your own number, I like to um, mix it up just a little bit, like to try at least two sets of numbers. So it does work in this case, but what if I had said x is negative 2? Is there something I can make y that would make this work? Um, if I said y is even, I mean, I could keep y as 3, right? But let's make it something different, just for example. Let's make it 5. So that would still be true that negative 5, right, negative y, is less than negative 2. That's true and is less than positive five, that's also true. So let's test it with these values and see if it works. If it still does work, then I feel much more confident about my answer. So let's erase this for now. I know that I like choice D based upon the first numbers I chose, but let's just try one more time. So absolute value of X, in this case that becomes positive two, is less than five, yes, so I like one. And for number two, I get negative 2 is greater than 0. Well, that's not true. That is not true anymore. Okay, so because it says must be true, not could be true, but must be true, that's even more so the reason why I try both of these options here. And we see on the second round that option 2 actually does not work. And then for number 3, y is greater than 0. And yeah, that's true. 5 is greater than 0. So it looks like 1 and 3 worked both times. So I'm going to actually change my answer and say that C is the best answer for that reason. Now, again, this comes by practice, right? So if you knew to plug in your own thing and you did something like this and you chose D and you're confused as to why you got it wrong, here's an example, right? And the best way to think about this, instead of being frustrated and saying it's not fair and why would they do that to me, is any time where you're making up your own number. Um, and even more so importantly than that, this is really about the must be true thing, right? I think that's the hint. Anytime I see the must be true, I just want to try two different things, right? So we can go positive, we can go negative, test them both. If they both work, then if they both point to the same answer, you should feel confident about it. If they don't point to the same answer, then you should only be confident about where they overlap, right? So for us, that's choice C.